is Trip Tucker. I'm a junior computer science and marketing major from near Savannah, Georgia. And today I'm gonna to be highlighting the next steps in the registration process, specifically talking about the Plan Ahead tool in iRoar. Now how all of this is gonna work is once you're done with your virtual advising meeting, you're gonna know exactly what you need to take during your first semester here at Clemson. Now, from the time your advising meeting ends to when it's actually time for you to register, there is most likely going to be a gap of time. And during that gap of time, we're going to utilize the plan ahead tool to build an academic plan from scratch to build our schedule for the first semester so that when your registration period rolls around, it's going to go a whole lot faster and a whole lot smoother. Now, before we get into plan ahead, I want to highlight a couple things on the screen. To the right over here, I have a mock advising sheet. These are just some of the classes I took during my first semester at Clemson. So we're going to be using this sheet for demo purposes. Over here in this tab, I have degree works open. It's super handy to have open and to look at while you're registering and while you're planning ahead. And then in this tab, I have the iRoar portal, which is how we're actually going to navigate to the plan ahead tool. So first, let's click on iRoar, then click on Student, Registration, Add Drop Classes, Plan Ahead, and then click on Plan Ahead. Then for selected term, you're just going to click this drop down menu, click Fall, and hit Continue. You're then going to click on Create a New Plan. And then you're going to be presented with this screen with three main areas. You have the search area, the calendar area, which for you will be empty. For me, it's not because I've already registered for some classes for the fall semester. And then you have a list view over here. So how this works is we're not actually registering for classes right now. We're just making a plan. And then once we save that plan, once we're done, we're going to be able to apply that plan when it's actually time to register. So I just want to make sure you know we are not registering at this moment. So we're going to just start with any class. doesn't really matter which order you look for classes. I'm going to look at chemistry first. If you don't know what chemistry 1010 is, don't worry, it's not a big deal. Uh, it's just the introductory chemistry class that a lot of incoming students have to take. So I'm going to put that in the search bar, hit on view sections. Don't click add course. That's going to do nothing for you. You're going to want to hit view sections because once we do that, it's going to show us every single section that's offered during the upcoming fall semester. A pro tip, highly would advise you click on 50 per page so that you can see more sections on one page and you're not flipping back and forth between pages. All right. What kind of information do we have here? Let's highlight that real quick. So the first important thing is you have your section number here. You can see every single section has a distinct section number. You can then see the amount of credit hours this course makes up. So chemistry 1010 is four credit hours. You can see instructor information here. And then you can see the meeting times and the amount of seats available. Now during this demo, you might notice that a lot of these sections are full. I wouldn't worry about it too much yet. I'm filming this weeks in advance before registration opens for incoming students. So most likely they're going to alter how many seats are available for these sections that say full. Uh, so don't worry too much about that. All right, let's go back to the meeting times right here. So what this is saying, this first date block right here, is that you meet for class on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 a.m. to 8.50. Okay, seems pretty simple. On some classes, such as chemistry, calculus, economics, a few others, you're gonna notice that there's another date block here where one date is highlighted, one day of the week is highlighted, and then there are some times that occur in the evening. So for example, 7.30 p.m. to 9.15 p.m., you might be thinking, I don't wanna be doing chemistry that late, and I agree. But what this date block is referring to is what we call common testing time. Uh, so for a lot of classes, a lot of students are taking them at Clemson. So what happens is whenever you have a midterm, you usually have two or three a semester. Whenever that midterm comes up, you're gonna take it on a Monday from 7.30 to 9.15 in a specified location. 
If you notice, no matter which section of Chemistry 1010 we look at, we see that that common testing time is the same, no matter what. So it doesn't matter which section you take, you're not going to get out of that evening testing time. All right. Now, you might be tempted to hit add here because, you know, you like this section of general chemistry, but I advise you to click on this hyperlink real quick and check a couple things out. I would do this for every single class you're looking up. First, click on restrictions. All right, this says no course restriction information is available. That's good. That means that we um, can sign up for this course. Now, notice if I scroll down here, Let's say I wanted to add this section of chemistry, section 71. If I click on this section, go to restriction, it says, must be enrolled in the honors college. So that means if I'm a member of the honors college, I can take this section. If I'm not a member of the honors college, I can't take this section. Now, plan ahead will let you add this course to your plan. But if you add it and you have a restriction, uh, you're going to get an error later on when you're registering, which is just going to cause a lot of stress. So make sure you're paying attention to those restrictions. All right, then we're going to check out the co-requisites. And this says that for Chemistry 1010, the co-rec is Chemistry 1011. What that means is if we want to take Chemistry 1010 during the fall semester, I also have to take Chemistry 1011 as well. Now, if I add Chemistry 1010 to my plan, let's go ahead and just do it. I'm going to add this section. I'm going to hit Save Plan. And you'll notice as soon as I save this, it's going to become a colored box down here. That does not automatically add the Corex. You have to go back and manually put in Chemistry 1011. So just make note of that. So let's do that. Let's go ahead. There are no problems with that. Let's go ahead and add Chemistry 1011 now. Chemistry 1011 is simply the lab for Chemistry 1010 and you'll notice there are a lot of different sections offered on different days. I want to just sign up for a random section of this so let's say I like this section right here I'm gonna click on the hyperlink hit restrictions okay there are no restrictions the co-rec is Chemistry 1010 I've already signed up for that you can also look at the prereqs right here. Prereqs just means those are the requirements you need beforehand in order to be eligible to take that class. All right, there's no problems with this section, so I can go ahead and click Add, hit Save Plan, and then you'll notice we have a colored text box down here, meaning we're good to go. Now let's say later on I'm like, I don't want to take this section of Chemistry 1011. I go down here, I hit Delete, I hit save plan and boom it gets rid of it I'm gonna go ahead and add that back though hit save plan and we're good to go all right now if we look back over here at the other classes I'm not gonna waste your time signing up for English and math because it's very similar to how you would sign up for chemistry I'm gonna go over this part right here though on my advising sheet it says non L requirement Okay, and what that means is this is a general education requirement. Abby went over DegreeWorks and we're actually going to go back to DegreeWorks and reference it. All right, so if you ever see something like this on your advising sheet, uh, it probably means it's a general education requirement. And look right here, we have non-literature under the general education tab in DegreeWorks. And like Abby showed us, we can click on this hyperlink. Now remember, uh, some classes, there are a lot of different courses that can fulfill that requirement. And that's the case with your general education requirement. So this is a non-literature requirement. All of these classes that are on your screen right now are classes that fulfill the non-lib requirement. So I'm going to look for a class that interests me or interests me the most and see if it has any scheduling information for the fall. You can see that right here, what I'm highlighting. So I'm scrolling through here, um, and let's see if I see anything I like. And let's say I find philosophy. So philosophy 1010, I see that there are some fall sections offered. I can just go back here, click search again, 
and search philosophy 1010. I'm going to hit view sections and here we go we can add a section. Uh, make sure you look at restrictions like I did for the chemistry courses. So really that is how you navigate the plan ahead tool. Now once I leave this page and save my plan I can always come back and view a plan. So if you want to periodically come back to your plan and make sure that our seats are still available, you can do that by clicking on enrollment slash waitlist. You can see that information right there. So you can alter your plan all the way up to when it's time to register. And Trinity is going to show you how you actually apply your plan during the registration period. And it's super smooth and very quick. The main tips here are make sure you just pay attention to the restrictions that's going to save you a whole lot of time later on. Thanks for watching and go Tigers!